name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The holidays are upon us. And how do we know that? There are signs of the holidays everywhere. Someone sent me the latest Target commercial, thinking it might augment my workout. The woman has baskets, shopping baskets. She's doing curls. She's on the red ball outside of Target doing crunches. And then they show her running through the store with a parachute slowing her down through the aisles. It's like the holidays are upon us. And we know this because people have their lights up and the amount of holiday sale circulars in the Sunday paper, it's all around us. The signs are all around us. And it is typically a chaotic and crazy time getting ready for the holidays. And we live in a chaotic and crazy time. We were down at um, our son's home in Alabama, right outside of Georgia, for Thanksgiving. and. Uh, I was wandering through his house and, and I went into a back room and he's getting ready to be deployed and out on the carpet was his big couple of huge duffel bags with uh, his camouflage and his, and his, our little granddaughter was crawling over his bulletproof vest and, and I'm thinking, wow, it really makes it real that we're at war and we forget that we're at war because this person is going off to war. It's crazy and chaotic times that we live in. The economy is, is wild. Our deficit is, is looming large. We can't get our political parties to work together. It's like sort of living in that apocalyptic moment that we heard about in the gospel today, where the, the sun grows dark and, and the, the stars fall out of the heavens. And it's like end times. In, the, in this, this chaotic and, and world that's full of, of trouble and anxiety and, and strife. And what do we do? We're running around trying to get ready for the holidays, maybe with too many expectations of what we need to do or spending too much money or whatever it is that, that's kind of barraging us and, and forcing some of our actions. And in the midst of all of this, it's so important to take a moment and hear the words of the gospel today, keep awake. That's the message, keep awake. Because in the midst of the craziness, God is faithful to us. But we can miss that if we're not awake. God is always faithful. That's what St. Paul said in the Corinthian readings today. God is faithful. And what the gospel is imploring us to do is to wait expectantly, not passively. Because if we wait passively, then we might miss what's going on. We do a lot of things passively. We, we call it automatic pilot. Now, how many of us have driven a stretch of road and then all of a sudden woken up and went, whoa, how did I get here? Come on. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Or, or we're on automatic pilot and we're heading to work and we realize that wasn't where we were going and we missed the turn. So we do have some things that we do on automatic pilot and then that's okay. But what the gospel is saying today is that we have to be hyper vigilant. We need to be on high alert. We have to be awake this season of Advent. Because if we just wait and see what happens, something will happen, but it may not be what needs to happen. Let me give you a couple of examples. We can wait to see who gets elected as the next president of the United States. We can wait and see. Or we can get actively involved and work for a candidate that we want to be elected. We can put out our own voice into the public square. We can have a rallying cry against people who aren't doing anything about the economy. And I'm not making any political statements here. I'm just saying, get involved. I don't care which party you want to get behind. I believe in a two-party system. But don't sit back and let it happen. Same thing with the church. 
We can wait and see what happens with St. Peter's. We're in the midst of a very crazy transition. So we can sit back and wait and see, or we can become actively involved and wait expectantly with the expectation that God will be faithful. How do we know God will be faithful to us? We know because God has always been faithful. The biggest faithfulness of God is sending us Jesus. And as we anticipate Christmas, this time of year, we wait expectantly for the child that we know has come, is here, and will come again. When we wait expectantly, we wait with an idea of what can happen. We wait with the idea of what the possibilities can be. When I came to this church five years ago, the daycare had closed, it had been closed for a year, and there was nothing happening in the building. Now, I knew that this church was here for a reason, that there was ministry to be done. And I waited expectantly. Now, I really wish I could stand up here in front of you and say, I went out and recruited Prelude to be here. Yep, I looked through the yellow pages and saw um, this organization that worked with um, people with traumatic brain injuries, and I went over to the executive director and said, you know what, you should be coming to St. Peter's. We could have a structured daycare here, we could have training for your people, but no, I just picked up the phone one day, said, hello, and they said, hey, we've been driving by your place, we've driven by a number of churches, would you be open to this? I said, sure, come on over. Now they're here, uh, not last week, but the week before, they had a huge Thanksgiving dinner. They had over 50 people eating in the parish hall. After it was over, they swore to me they would clean up the floor, and they did, but it was, it was an amazing scene. The food, the smell of food, the people, the laughing, the joy. Waiting expectantly for what God can do. The vestry at the December meeting will look at a proposal from uh, the county for the WIC program to meet here, women, infant, and children. They want to meet here one day a week uh, to reach out to women who are pregnant and, and may need some help in terms of getting formula or diapers or vitamins or whatever they need for their infants and children. Waiting expectantly, knowing that God is faithful. Because God has always been faithful. God sent us Jesus, who showed us how much God loves us and showed us how to reach out to other people, who showed us how to do ministry, how to bring in the people who are left out, who need help. In this Advent season, we remember that God is faithful to us, and what the response to that faithfulness is, is for us to keep awake, to be aware of possibilities, to be open to what can come, what is next. None of us know, but we know that something will come and continue and carry us through so that we can be and do all of what God is calling us to do. There's a real difference between waiting and seeing and waiting expectantly. We wait expectantly because God is faithful to us.